Yep, not wanting to do it. All right, let's go into the guest. I'm just going to pick this first guy here. Looks like we are going into the training mode now, which is always a fun one. So Virtual Heroes um, set up this game and actually released it to the public in, I want to say it was 2014. Um, it was created in 20, let's see, I guess that was uh, 2008. Um, on a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. This is something that they did as a, um, a program with George Washington University. Turn that volume up just a little bit. Well, this is fun, so my mouse isn't actually wanting to work with me right now. Well, that's going to make life a little difficult. Hold down your right mouse button and move your mouse in order to look around the world. There's an X on the back wall. Move your mouse to look at it now. down your right mouse button and move your mouse in order to look around the world. There's an X on the back wall. Move your mouse to look at it now. Last night while I was struggling with this thing, everything was related to the streaming software itself, but the game is working fine. Tonight the game doesn't want to work. That's okay too. Let me try. I have a second mouse here. Let's see if this laptop, which I've never used this other mouse with, will actually work. Hold down your right mouse button and move your mouse in order to look around the world. There's an X on the back wall. Move your mouse to look at it now. Yeah, it's not looking like this mouse. Oh, there we go. All right. Good. I did recognize now it. Move your mouse to look at the O on the front wall. We might actually be in business. Good. Now let's work on walking around. You can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around. Pressing the W key will move you forward. Pressing the A key will move you to the left. The D key will move you to the right. And the S key will move you backward. Move through the course by following the arrows that are marked on the floor. All right, so for those of you who know me, you know I'm really not exactly a gamer. Um, I have worked on several projects as a subject matter expert, um, which has given me the ability to, like to play to a lot. I would like to with the equipment placed at the table. The object on the far left of the table is the mobile data terminal, or MDT, for short. You can access your MDT by clicking on its picture on your screen or by pressing the four key. Access your MDT and I'll guide you through its use. Your MDT will allow you to access your site info, your site map, your patient info, and your reference material. The site map section of your MDT allows for a complete overhead view of the incident area. In an incident command division, you will use the map to establish sectors, allocate available personnel, monitor casualty numbers, and evaluate current weather conditions. We will cover this more in detail at a later time. Move your mouse over to the site info tab and click the left mouse button. The site info section of your MDT allows you to access an overview of the current incident, the current organization structure of personnel, 
and a summary of your actions performed during the incident. We will cover this in more detail later. Move your mouse over to the patient info tab and click the left mouse button. Hey Blair, how is the sound coming from the uh, laptop itself? The patient info section of your MGP allows you to access patient interview answers, patient vital signs, and a list of patient injuries. We will cover this in more detail later. Move your mouse over to the reference tab and click the left mouse button. The reference material section of your MGP provides you access to reference material that may increase your knowledge regarding a given incident type or situation. You can close your MDP by clicking on the close button at the lower right. Close your MDP and I'll get you familiar with some of your other equipment. The object in the middle of the table is your first in bag. You can access your first in bag by clicking on the picture on the side of your screen or by pressing the one key. Access your first in bag and I'll guide you through its use. Your first in bag is designed to hold the majority of the supplies that a first responder may use their call. You can select the item you want by clicking on its name with the left mouse button. You can close your first in bag by clicking on the close button at the upper right. Close your first in bag and I'll get you familiar with some of your other equipment. The object on the right of the table is a drug box. You can access your drug box by clicking on its picture on your screen or by pressing the two key. Access your drug box and I'll guide you through its use. Your drug box holds the various drugs that you may need to treat a patient. You can select the drug that you want to use by clicking on its name with the left mouse button. You can close your drug box by clicking on the close button at the upper right. Close your drug box and I'll get you familiar with some of the other equipment. The last object on the table is your portable radio. You can access your radio by clicking on its picture on the screen or by pressing the 5 key. Access your radio and I'll guide you through its use. Your radio will allow you to contact dispatch and other EMS personnel. You can select the different radio command menus by clicking on the buttons on the left of the panel. We will go into the radio functionality in more detail later. You can close your radio by clicking on the close button. Close your radio and let's continue. You can pause the game at any time by clicking on its picture or by pressing its gate key. Within the pause menu, you can change your game settings, restart a roll, and exit to the main menu. Now, make your way toward the door on the left. You can interact with certain objects such as a door in front of you. Take close to the door and move your mouse cursor over it. Click the left mouse button on the door and then click on the open door option. I'd like to walk you through the standard procedures for responding to a call. Prior to responding to a call, you will be provided vital information regarding the scene on your MDT screen. The MDT screen provides you with an overview of the scene in which you are about to enter. Like any call, review the information carefully. You will need that information to properly select the appropriate personal protective equipment for the call. When you are done reading the dispatch screen, you can press the continue button to proceed. Upon arrival at the scene, you must first select the appropriate personal protective equipment. Your PPE is located in the rear of your ambulance, and the selection screen looks like this. You must first select the item that you want to wear from the PPE list on the left of the screen. Move your mouse cursor over the item and press and hold the left mouse button. Then, drag the item over to the figure on the right and release the mouse button. If you want to remove a piece of equipment, move your mouse cursor to the remove button for the item and click the left mouse button. You can also remove all of your PPE at once by pressing the Remove All button located in the lower right of the screen. After you have selected your PPE, click on the Continue button.
I don't actually remember what I really need for uh, for this patient because I actually can fully admit here that I did not read um, what this patient was. Besides the equipment found in your first aid bag and drug box, you can grab additional equipment from either the back of your ambulance or the MCI trailer. To select which additional equipment you want, move your mouse cursor to either the rear door of the ambulance or the door of the MCI trailer. Then press the left mouse button and select open. Let's pick some additional equipment for this call. Open either the MCI trailer or the ambulance. I'm going to walk over to the ambulance and check it out. The additional equipment selection screen works in the same way as the selection screen. Position your mouse cursor over an Probably item. Probably not a surprise that the uh, oxygen. Then drag the item over to the additional equipment slot on the right and release the mouse button. If you want to remove a piece of equipment that you selected, move your mouse cursor to the remove button for that item and click the left mouse button. You can also remove all of your selected equipment at once by pressing the remove all button located in the lower right screen. After you have selected your additional equipment, click on the continue button. Yeah. And access your additional equipment by selecting the additional equipment button on the screen. It has the same functionality as your first in bag and drug box. When you first arrive at a scene, just like on a real call, it's important that you use your radio and notify the dispatch center that you're on scene. Looks like I lost you, Blair. Can't say that I blame you, brother. Glad you showed up if you happen to look at this later. All right. So I need to let my dispatcher know that I am here. Copy that command, informing responding units. After arriving on the scene, it's important to advise dispatch what incident type you've encountered. Open up your radio. Select the Notify Dispatch of Incident Type tab. Now select Terrorist Attack in the Explosive column, and then click on the Accept button. Type. After arriving on the scene, it's important to advise dispatch what incident type you've encountered. Open up your radio. Select the Notify Dispatch of Incident Type tab. Now select Terrorist Attack in the Explosive column, and then click on the Accept button. Copy that command. <laughs> it's important to remain in your assigned area during play. Your assigned area is typically marked off by tape, traffic cones, or a combination of both. If you leave your assigned area, you will first be warned, but continue to wander from your assignment and you will be forced back and will be penalized. So don't do it. Now it's time to become familiar with treating patients. The person next to me will be your simulated patient for our tutorial. Let's get started. Move closer to your patient. Before treating the patient, you should first perform a primary assessment of that patient. After performing an assessment, you should attempt to ask the sample patient interview questions. To perform a patient interview, click on the patient with your left mouse button and select Start Interview. When conducting a patient interview, you can select the category of the questions that you want to ask from the left column. The list of questions that you can ask within each category will appear in the right side of the interview box. To ask a question, Move your mouse cursor over a question and press the left button. After you have asked the question, the patient's answer will appear in the general information section for that patient on the MVP screen. After you have asked all the questions that are appropriate for your patient, it's time to begin treatment. Left click on the patient and select begin treatment. Once you've selected begin treatment, you wouldn't be able to move away from your patient until you select end treatment. All right. Let's begin. Select Begin Treatment. 
So this wanted me to begin treatment, but I was really looking to see where my gloves are. I remember this game being very interesting. I haven't played this game in probably, I don't know, easily um, five years. Though I've used it for teaching several times. Um, it's a great example of... All right, let's begin. Select begin treatment. He's just a little impatient. If you're having difficulties dealing with injuries on your patient, you can get a list of their obvious injuries by accessing the injury section or the patient on your MVP screen. While you are treating a patient, you must click on a specific region of the body to perform an action to that body part. Let's start off by taking the patient's pulse. Move your cursor to the patient's neck and click the left mouse button. Then select Take Pulse and click the left mouse button again. Hope I'm wearing gloves already. I guess we'll see in just a second. Let me check this out. Oh, yeah, I remember all the, uh, the fun feedback. Didn't they say with the... Uh, start off by taking the patient's pulse. Move your cursor to the patient's yeah, no gloves. And click the I'd like to have some gloves. The pulse, the reading will automatically be displayed on the MVP screen. Comes up up here. It will appear in the vital section for that patient on the MVP screen. It appears that this patient needs oxygen. You will need to go back to the ambulance or the MCI trailer and retrieve the equipment. All right, let's apply the oxygen to the patient. In order to do this, you must first select it from the additional equipment bag. After you have selected your O2 equipment, move your mouse cursor to the patient's head and press the left mouse button. Now select the fly O2 mask and press the left mouse button again. Well, let's see. I'm a fairly firm believer in a uh, non rebreather mask. We can come down to a cannula later if we need it. This simulated patient is experiencing chest pain. Let's administer an aspirin. Open your drug box and get some aspirin. After you select the aspirin, move your mouse cursor to the patient's head. Press the left mouse button, select administer aspirin, and again press the left mouse button. Your patient is now ready to be transported to the hospital. During mass casualty incidents, you would notify your treatment officer that your patient is ready for transport by clicking on the patient and selecting ready for transport. Since this is a single patient, for this exercise, you would let your partner know that the patient is ready for transport. Select end treatment and then place your mouse cursor on me. Click the left mouse button and select ready for transport. Excellent. Now that you have completed your training, let me explain the After Action Review, or AAR. When you finish each scenario, a screen will appear that displays the AAR, which describes your performance. It looks a little like this. The first time that I ever actually came across the After Action Review terminology was in setting up games and when I was working kind of as a subject uh, matter expert for a couple of games a few years ago. Currently working on one now that's been a whole lot of fun as well. Um, it's nice to be able to go into situations like this and actually get into um, details so we can tell a whole lot more about what's going on and, and able to actually direct people who are learning something for the first time. So with just what we've done in this training scenario, we've learned um, how they want us to communicate with our, our team. I'm doing this one game, but there could be a hundred of us playing this game, um, as opposed to if we had standardized patients, this would have taken so far three different people to train just me and walking through this and holding it as a conversation. Um, all of the equipment that we've had here has been um, virtual, so it's not like we actually have to have an oxygen mask or any of those things. It's extremely valuable to do 
um, cognitive training and actually working through some of the cognitive skills this way, um, which we wouldn't normally be able to, to really address. Um, if you haven't done something for quite a while, it's nice to be able to, to take a look at um, some of that. Physical skills, like how to put on an oxygen mask and that sort of thing, um, or, want, or something that really don't go away. When people learn them, they tend to hold on to them for a really long period of time. But the cognitive side of things, of like what order to put things on. So putting a regulator onto the oxygen, um, checking to make sure that there's a, an O-ring attached there, putting the tubing onto the regulator itself, putting the, um, making sure the tubing is attached appropriately to the mask, filling the bag on the non-rebreather mask like we just used, how to place it on a head, putting things into those type of order actually matter. Uh, one of the games that we worked on a few years ago was related to the order in which to give rapid sequence drugs. And so that was a DOD funded project um, for deployment of mainly like family medicine physicians or people who don't normally do intubations to the field and the main reason why we were doing that was so that one, they would be able to do something they're going to have to do once they get over there. But two, we wanted to make sure that they were actually prepared um, to know what order to do those things. You don't want to give somebody a drug. Male, blood, and complaining of extreme flu symptoms at 1247 Gamma Marino Avenue, who resides on the third floor in Unit 3. Copy that, dispatch. Medic 19 is fine. Medic 19. Be advised, this is the third time EMS has responded to this building within the last 10 hours for similar calls. All right, so this is a fun um, scenario. This is actually a biologic hazard that we're going to hear in the beginning. Um, I think for what I've learned tonight and doing this as a first live stream, I've probably about tapped out. Um, there's a few things I need to do to, to clean this up some. Uh, I'm not even sure how long I've been streaming this now, but let me go ahead and end this here in just a second. But thinking through kind of, uh, and to summarize, I guess a little bit, um, for the simulation professionals that, uh, that may be watching the stream later, I, I typically use these types of games, and this one in particular as an example for students on what uh, a video game or, or some type of serious gaming could be for gamification of um medical skills in particular for any of the human resources folks that are on here this is a great way to do like a pre-hire assessment because the the case that they're doing here there's a lot of medical knowledge that has to be applied here um, there has to be some decision making that goes into this case um, maybe we'll play this game um, in this first case scenario over the weekend that might actually be a little bit of fun i'm hoping we can do a live stream tomorrow um, of one of the, the games that we need to evaluate actually uh, in, in my office for neurosurgery. But um, seeing where that knowledge, skills, and abilities um, really lie with our candidates can be kind of cool. Um, onboarding, so you can see how a game like this could be extremely useful for onboarding people, um, bringing them in, letting them see exactly what equipment we're going to be using without actually having to touch it. That could be extremely valuable. Um, communications. So this particular game teaches several different ways that we want to have formal communication. Um, some other games that we've designed have actually been completely related to uh, the communication techniques um, revolving around like team steps as a, uh, um, a method of communication within uh, teams. So things like call outs. So if you see something that's going wrong, you're going to call out what that is shared mental models, making sure that you're communicating with everybody and actually creating a shared mental model. Um, that's essentially what we were doing just a few minutes ago when we looked at our training officer and said that we're ready for transport. We're getting both of us in the right mind frame. Of we're now going to get together and we're going to leave this scene. Um, so there's a lot of advantages in onboarding to actually teach if there is some type of formalized communication that we want to have. Um, but then it can also be used for like rolling out um, additional learning and development. So for the case that we're getting ready to go into, um, <laughs> I tagged Billy Fisher in the tweet that I sent out. Billy, if you happen to be watching this and you made it this far through, um, this particular case um, is actually an Ebola patient. Um, so when you get into the, to the biologic um, threat that's occurring here, 
Um, some of the symptoms become a little bit obvious once uh, once it gets going, but Ebola is not something that we see very often. So this gives us that opportunity to um, practice those skills of how are we going to communicate with our teams that we need to put this building on quarantine. Um, this particular patient um, is on the third floor, um, but they've also had several people that were called to this location um, in the past um, several hours. So it becomes important to like think about, okay, where did those patients go? Um, how, who have they come in contact with? Who do we need to start quarantining um, elsewhere in the city? Uh, lots of, of opportunities there as well. Um, so moving beyond this one, the next case after that is actually an earthquake, which is um, a kind of fun one, especially considering that they just had a big earthquake in California. So lots and lots of opportunities. I definitely want to get back to playing this game again um, sometime in the future. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to shut down for tonight, make some good notes on what I've learned while trying to do this live stream. Um, I think I actually really kind of like the, the software that I used tonight. It was um, fairly easy tonight as opposed to, to last night where I was actually kind of struggling with it. Um, I had a crashing game every time I was trying to do something that was really kind of giving me a little bit of a challenge for some reason. Um, but let me go ahead and turn the, uh, the game off here. Um, go back to the main menu here. And um, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and quit. And I appreciate anybody who's watching this later. Love any feedback. Um, I may pull this video down and cut out the first little bit where I was kind of struggling along and then repost it later. Um, but in the meantime, I thank you for, uh, for watching. And please comment below. Subscribe if you haven't before. I'm hoping we can do several more events like this in the future and just in general get a feel for uh, what kinds of opportunities are out there for uh, for gaming and simulation and just generally taking a look at tools that are available for uh, human resources um, folks uh, simulation uh, to me simulation is just a small part of um, kind of under that learning and development sort of uh, um, branch of, uh, of human resources and um, how could something like this, even though it's a completely different environment, still be used to train your teams for um, something that is pertinent? So, you know, do you work in a, a manufacturing plant, but still need to communicate or still have to do things in a certain order? And um, what skills could you pick up in a gaming environment like this that could apply? Um, thanks again to Virtual Heroes for making this one available for free. Um, so if anybody wants to download it in the description, there is a, uh, um, a link where you can hop in and download and play. Thanks so much. Take care. Have a good night.